What is going on all you Pokemon Collective Maniacs out there? This is Ryan, the Pika Pika Papa, and I am just so freaking pumped to bring this video to you guys today. So I have spent a little bit more time than I thought pulling together all of this Sun and Moon data uh, for this Q1 projection results, and that's because there was so much there. I felt like I owed it to you guys to do more than just pull these slides together. I felt like we should do an entire Q1 wrap-up, which we're going to do in this video. Not only are we going to talk about the Q1 performance of the Sun and Moon sets, but at the very end, I've got some slides where I'm going to pull it all together and talk about overall Q1 performance for Sun and Moon and Sword and Shield, any correlations that we see, and all kinds of cool stuff like that. So my selfless plug as I do it every video. If you love the data side of things, if you think this stuff is really, really cool. Hey, I know 80% of you who watch this are not subscribers yet. I would really appreciate it if you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, drop a comment down below. It really helps us out and it goes a long way and let me know that you guys appreciate the work that I do. On top of that, we have yet to do a box break here on this channel and I want to rip some wax. So in those comments down below, let me know what you'd like to see me open. If you want to see me open Scarlet and Violet, I'm happy to do that. If you want to see us do a uh, I'll go as high as Evolving Skies. I can do some Ultra Prism. Like, we can do something. Don't drop Team Up. Don't drop XY Evolutions, right? Like, Pika Pika Papa don't have it like that quite yet. But certainly willing to drop some coin on some pretty cool booster boxes. So let me know what you want to see us open, and we will get into that, okay? So now, let's get into the point of this video, and that is the Sun and Moon booster box prediction results from Q1. So this was an absolute amazing exercise. If you want to see the details, I'm not going to go over it again. you got to go back and watch some of the other videos. But we put a ton of math and a ton of effort into taking a look at these booster box prices. Uh, and we did it through a series of um, Excel spreadsheets and business BIs, which we used to give us some projections. So this one, there's some serious variants, which I thought was awesome, right? When we looked at Sword and Shield, there was a whole lot of commonalities. But here we have some variants, which is good because remember, Sun and Moon today is Sword and Shield tomorrow, right? Sword and Shield is sun setting. Scarlet and Violet is coming in. Our lessons from Sun and Moon, we're going to be able to apply to Sword and Shield further down the road. And I'm really, really excited to share this with you guys. So... I'll get off my soapbox. Let's get into it right now. So we're going to start off with the four oldest sets that we always do. Sun and Moon, Guardian Rising, Burning Shadows, and Crimson Invasion. Sun and Moon, listen, it's just below the confidence bound. So here's what I do. If you see it in red, that means that it gives an upper confidence bound and a lower confidence bound. So for Sun and Moon, you see the upper confidence bound was it said, hey, this can go as high as positive 8.4% in the first quarter, or it can go down as low as almost 6% in the first quarter. If it's in red, that actual bar down there, that means it the upper and lower confidence bound was wrong. It ended up outside of that. So for Sun and Moon, it said, hey, it could go down as low as $217 and it actually ended up at $214. So yeah, it's knocking on the door. Yeah, it's super close, but guess what? A miss is a miss is a miss. So it's in red. It was lower than the confidence bounds projected. We have talked about the way base sets tend to perform. The interesting thing here is Sun and Moon didn't do really well, but if you looked at the Sword and Shield video that we did, Sword and Shield base set has just been on fire. Sun and Moon, not so much. So not a whole lot we can learn from two different base sets doing two very different things, but it's still interesting to understand how Sun and Moon has performed in the long run because maybe Sword and Shield is destined for this in the future. We shall see. Guardians Rising is one, though. Guardians Rising is right near the mid projection, right? It's up 3% over a quarter. And I want everybody to realize when we're talking about these quarterly results, this is three months. Up 3% over three months is great. Some of these we're going to talk about four or five, seven, freaking team up is on fire. Like when we talk about these huge grains over the course of a quarter, it is just absolutely incredible uh, to see these types of growth in such a short amount of time here in the Pokemon sealed space. So uh, Burning Shadows, hey, it was up 1.6%. The math said, the math didn't know what was going to go on. So look at the variance here between the upper confidence bound and the lower confidence bound. The math said, hey, this can go up 13% or it can go down 13%. And that's because leading up into this, all the data points that we put in, there was a whole lot of variance going up, down, all over over the place. So the math pretty much said, hey, we're not sure we're going to protect ourselves to the upside and to the downside, but Burning Shadows did okay. It was up 1.6%. It was right in the middle. So the math was kind of right when it came to the midline production or projection. <coughs> Excuse me. Pika Pika Papa has got a little bit of a cold here. So I'm working through some, uh, some throat issues. Crimson Invasion, it was flat. It wobbled a little bit over the quarter. You know, when I was pulling this data, you know, some of it was up, some of it was down, but at the end of the day, it added, it ended pretty much exactly flat. And the math said it could go up 10%, it could go down 14%, and it ended up right in the middle. So Burning Shadows, Crimson Invasion, the math was pretty much spot on for those two. Uh, really excited to see that. And what we will see here as we move into the middle ones, Ultra Prism is one where I was surprised, okay? The math really loved Ultra Prism, and we're going to talk about this at the end when we do our, our summation. But you see that it was green green. And what I mean by green green is the lower confidence bound was positive. A lot of times you'll see the lower confidence bound is negative because the math is naturally going to protect the downside. 
But we'll start to see some sets here in the Sun and Moon era. We didn't see this in Sword and Shield, where the math says, hey, even the lower confidence bound is positive and the upper confidence bound is positive, right? So in this example right here, so Ultra Prism still went up. So even though it's red, it still went up 2%. Again, up 2% over the course of a quarter. That's not bad. Nothing to shake a fist at, right? But the math thought it was going to be up at least 3.35% or as high as almost 9%. So even though it went up, it didn't go as high as the math had suggested. So I marked it as a red. Um, but still, decent performance from Ultra Prism. Again, these green, green sets, you expect them to do well, and they have. And I deep dive into that here in a minute later on. Then we get to Forbidden Light. Forbidden Light, the math was 50-50, right? It said, hey, it could go down 3.5%. It could go up 3.5%. Uh, it went down, and it actually went down than the estimate. It came in at a negative 7.5%. So not a great quarter for Forbidden Light. I will tell you this. When I was at the uh, Pokemon convention that I shared with all you guys, Collecticon, these, these sealed boxes were selling for way under this. I think I could have picked one up for $250, $270. I decided not to do it because I'm going to wait on it. But uh, really interesting to see that that price point, which was pre presented you know, a month ago, is now starting to be reflected in this data here. So not a great quarter for Forbidden Light. But then we get into Celestial Storm. Celestial Storm did absolutely great, right? The math loved it. It said, hey, even the lower confidence bound is a positive four and a quarter percent. Upper confidence bound is right at 9.3 percent. And it responded well with a positive 5.4 percent. And as we talk about this, right, in Wednesday's video, I'm going to go ahead and show you the Q2 projections for all of these. So when we see these sets that are performing well and we say, hey, listen, these green green sets. These all seem to perform well last quarter. Maybe that gives us an idea of in the middle of a bull market, you want to make sure that you make good, good decisions. And we certainly are in the middle of a Pokemon bull market right now. But these sets, these green, green sets might give us an indication that these are the safest of, um, of these older sets to go ahead and put some money into. Then we look at Lost Thunder. This was another one which was green, green, and it responded with a positive 4.2%. So again, so far, so good for these sets. And now we're going to get into these next sets. Team Up, Unbroken Bonds, Unified Mind, and Cosmic Eclipse. And this is where Pika Pika Pop Pop got his absolute heartbroken. First, we'll start off with Team Up, which is just on absolute fire. It's all the way up north of $1,000, $1,055. The thing that I want to call out about Team Up is it hasn't exchanged hands a lot because the price is so high. In order for the price to change, it has to exchange hands. So we're just going to have to wait and see over the next quarter if people start buying this up, if it becomes more liquid. Uh, we shall see. I know there's not a lot of that product out there, but... Um, the math really favored it. You saw the math said, hey, this can go up almost 17.8% or it could go down 6% and it certainly returned the favor going up 11.6% over a quarter, which is just crazy. And I will say this, the last two sales on TCG Player were for $1,450 and the lowest one that's listed right now is for $1,700. So this number has got to change. The only reason that the number ended up at $1,055 is because there was one that was sold much lower, which brought the average down. But I think this is going to continue to go up as long as we see some more exchange hands. Unbroken Bonds is where I absolutely got my heart broken. Look at how strong the math loved it. The math said, hey, this could go as high as 12.5% or even as low as positive 3%. A green, green, that went down. Unbroken bonds down negative 4.7%. And as crazy as this is to say, I love it. I love it. If all we have is math correlating left and right, if we don't have any curveballs, if we don't have anything coming up, then that means that we're probably doing something wrong, right? Like we don't live in a vacuum. Things are going to happen. Things are that are going to be unexplained. And, um, to me, this really caught me off guard. I was super bullish on unbroken on bonds. Uh, but there was one key indicator that we've talked about on this channel for a long time that wasn't in unbroken bonds favor. Again, after this slide, we're going to get into that. But I thought that was really, really interesting. Uh, Unified Minds. Unified Minds, Green Green crushed it, up 7.4%. Cosmic Eclipse. I've been talking about Cosmic Eclipse for a while. Really bullish on that product overall. Uh, again, another product that was heavily favored. And it was up 5.3% over the quarter. Now we're going to get into that slide I was talking about here. This is it, and I, this isn't intended for you guys to be able to read everything, but the color codes are there to represent stuff. So listen, we talked about green, green. So in the upper right-hand corner, those are all of the 24 sets that we talked about over the last two videos. The green, green ones you can see right there. There were only four sets, and they were all in sun and moon, that were green, green, and then also were the top four. You remember we talk about the average top 20 price versus the booster box price. These four sets, Unified Mind, Cosmic Eclipse, Lost Thunder, Ultra Prism, all four of those, they had the highest top 20 card average versus booster box price, and they were green, green, and all of them performed really, really well. It is crazy to think that the worst performer of that was up 2%, which is Ultra Prism, because over the course of a quarter, all of these are incredibly strong results. The interesting thing, too, is when you average out the other... Um, 
eight sets, okay, when you average the other eight sets, they were only up 0.25% versus this strong average from these four. So there's certainly a correlation there over a quarter. What does that mean? Not a whole heck of a lot, but I thought this was something important because I'm always talking about how our videos here have to layer on top of each other and they build and they build because we are trying to play chess when everybody else is playing checkers. And so we're gonna continue to warehouse all this data. We're gonna continue to look for correlations. And when we see them, we're gonna call them out. We're also gonna look for things like, um, where we see things that don't make sense because that's just as important as when things do. So here it is. This is a whole lot of words, but there were a lot of things that we talked about over the last couple videos. We're like 24 sets were examined over Q1 from Sword and Shield and Sun and Moon. 17 of the 24, 70% of them were within the upper and lower confidence bounds. That is incredibly awesome. Three of them that were outside to the negative were the older sets, right? Four of them that were outside to the positive were in the newer sets, the Sword and Shield era, right? Now, Sword and Shield, we can't, we can't start layering in our learnings from Sun and Moon into Sword and Shield yet because Sword and Shield just has too much product out there right now. The whole point in learning this is that once Sword and Shield is fully sunsetted, once Scarlet and Violet has fully taken over, once we think Pokemon Center is sold out of all of the Sword and Shield booster boxes, then we can start to layer in some of these learnings. But again, this channel in its infant, is in its infancy. We've only been doing this for four months, so we're gonna continue to build and get better with this. Um, um, again, I talked about this on the last side, sets with the highest average top 20 price versus booster box and were double green in the upper and lower confidence bound performed incredibly strongly versus average. That is certainly something when I roll out the Q2 projections here in a minute uh, on Wednesday, I'm going to make sure that I take that into account. I guarantee you I'm going to be picking up some of those things. Uh, so only five of the 24 were down for the quarter. Brilliant stars. We talked about that. I don't think that's a reflection of brilliant stars uh, being a bad set. I think that's a reflection of the price was so much higher than the MSRP. You can buy it for MSRP on Pokemon Center. So I think the market is starting to realize, hey, I don't need to spend 180 bucks on eBay. I can buy it for 145 on Pokemon Center. So that price is naturally starting to come down. That doesn't freak out at all. We talked about Forbidden Light. Forbidden Light had a rough quarter, Unbroken Bonds, Sun and Moon Base Set, Darkness of Blaze. All of these were down Q1. Two sets were flat. I wanted to call that out as well. Crimson Invasion, Rebel Clash. We're starting to see some of these older sets, Rebel Clash, Crimson Invasion, Sun and Moon, Darkness of Blaze. Like these are in the first four sets of the release of any new era. And we talk about how some of the newer sets have a tendency to struggle over the long run. So at least in Q1, we saw some of them struggle as well. And then 70% of all sets were up in Q1. When I talk about us being in a Pokemon sealed bull market, this is a good indication that we are. Anyways, I have absolutely had a blast doing this. I've got to continue to keep the nose to the grindstone so that I can put out these Q2 projections for Sun and Moon before Q1 is officially over. And I should have that out to you guys by Wednesday. Drop some comments down below. Let me know what wax you want me to open. Let's have a ton of fun ripping something. We'll cross our fingers and pray for some big pulls because at the end of the day, we all know that ripping wax is usually a losing proposition, but there is value in the fun. There is value in sharing it with you guys. And um, I'm super pumped. So. You guys have an epic one. I appreciate you as always, and we'll talk soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye.